Good morning. Let me start this up. Okay, so our session is actually going to be talking about creating widgets for iBooks, which is actually now known as Apple Books, but the program that you started off with is still called iBooks Author, so it's a little confusing. And what I'm going to focus on is what is already actually included in the program. So let's say you open iBooks Author, it's your first time making one, so you're just going to choose a template, and you've got all your content, there's going to be no edits. Bye. Um, and what makes iBooks stand out is their widget. So this is actually the widget menu. You have a couple of options within there. And the first one I'd like to talk about is the gallery widget. Um, so with all the different widgets, you have these layout options. So you can move the captions around, uh, top, bottom. You can split it between the two. And you can make it as minimalistic as you would like, or you can add all kinds of information around your widget. So to include the pictures inside, you can click this plus button, you'll have this drop down, um, you can choose your images that you want to include that way, or you can actually just directly drag and drop them into the widget. And so when you're doing this, it will actually create these little arrows at the bottom that you can click through just automatically. Uh, you can also do it as thumbnails if you would prefer to do that way instead of the little arrows. The next widget I would like to talk about is the media widget. So it's going to pull up here. And this is what you would use if you were going to put in a movie or an animation. Um, here again, you can just drag and drop. It might take a minute to optimize. And then your options within the media widget is you can play it on full screen, play on the page. It can play automatically as people get to the page. Set your thumbnail, set it to loop. And then you can actually preview it within the widget um, in the author. Okay. So the next widget I'd like to talk about is the 3D widget. Uh, this one has some limitations. If you're going to bring in a model, you have to save it as a Collada 1.4, which is going to give you a digital asset exchange file extension. And 1.4 works better than 1.5. There is actually two options. Um, you can set it to rotate on certain axes. You can set it to auto-rotate when it pulls up, kind of like this. They made it a little bit bigger. And then you can move it around in space, look at it at all different angles if that's the way you've got it set up. But the limitations on this include um, the polygon number. So you have to keep it under 10,000. And if we look at this model, you can see it when it comes up. Uh, it is blown out, usually, when you put it in there, very bright. And then when you look at it in preview mode, as you can see, this is a very low polygon model, um, very basic materials. You can't zoom in and out. It's just kind of there to free rotate. And then sometimes, if you're trying to bring in a more complicated model, such as this one, um, when it comes up, is you'll actually get a warning. And it will tell you that it's not able to be used on older devices, which could cause all kinds of issues for people who don't have the newest version of iPads. So it limits your accessibility. Um, you have to do very basic shading, keep a very simple model. Okay. So the next widget I'd like to talk about is the interactive image widget. And this is actually my favorite. I sped it up a little bit so you could see me moving around everything. But basically, you can move around these labels on top of a target image, uh, change the information how you would like it to go. And when you click on them, you can have a description underneath. So it doesn't just have to be a normal label. Uh, the way that you set this up is you set the views so that when you click on the labels, it moves around on the image if that's what you would like it to do. And this is an example from an iBook I'm working on right now. I decided not to have totally different views, but you can kind of see how it would actually look in the iBook. Okay, so the last widget I'd like to talk about is the review widget. Your default is a four answer multiple choice. You can go up to six different answers. And there's a couple of different layouts that they include. One of them being all pictures as your answer, if you'd like to do that. But the one that I like the most is this label to target image, kind of very similar to the interactive image. And so when you've got it in the iBook, this is actually what it comes up as. And this is to test, you know, you put the labels on your little hot spots. And if you get it all correct, a minute here, you get all green arrows. You did it correctly. Um, and that way they can check and go back. So this is the Educational Resources Library. Uh, you can access them through vmerk.com or actually just searching for us on iTunes. There's a lot of different examples that we have in here. And one of the ones that I wanted to show, going into kind of how you can 
expand upon what's in iBooks is this is a Revaway Reveal widget that the image was created by Matt Kratz and the code was done by Zach Ginn, who they created this uh, for the HTML widget, which is also within your drop down menu. And um, it's just a little bit of code, you just kind of put it in there and it works pretty well. So as this is expanding onto what you can actually do within iBooks, I'm gonna hand it off to Amanda and she's gonna talk about some ways to get around some of the limitations that iBooks has. Thank you, Caitlin. So hello, my name is Amanda, and I'm going to be talking to you about using Sketchfab to incorporate interactive 3D models into an iBook. Sketchfab is an online interactive 3D model viewer and that can be made into a widget and then embedded into an iBook. So as Caitlin mentioned, there uh, is an interactive 3D widget in iBooks, however, it's pretty limited. And uh, Sketchfab is a good alternative because it has a lot more interactivity you have much more control on how your model looks and it has pretty good graphics. And then it's web-based, so that reduces the file size of your um, iBook without sacrificing any of the quality. It also has animated 3D models as well as interactive annotations. And then it generates an HTML code that you can easily turn into an iBook widget. And so you can upload your models and create an account at their website. So now I'm gonna go into some examples about how interactive 3D models can be used to create medical educational materials. So this is an interactive I created about the anatomy of all the ligaments of the ankle. As you can see, the widget is embedded in the iBook and then it uses an internet connection to run the interactive. So the user can explore the model, um, and it's, so it's great for showing a complicated piece of anatomy that has a lot of different angles to understand. And then the interactive labels can be really helpful in demonstrating anatomy that has a lot of different pieces to it. It's also really good for students to test themselves and all these incredibly long ligament names. Um, and you can see the graphics are really good and uh, pretty much all the integrity of the materials and textures you put on it are maintained. So in this example, I feature the, one of my favorite aspects of Sketchfab, which is that you can incorporate an animated interactive 3D model. And that opens up a lot more opportunity for educational materials. Oh. There we go. So this model demonstrates a complex series of ankle fractures for an iBook describing an ankle fracture classification system for podiatrist students. The animation will play through and then the user is able to still interact with it as it's animating. And then the slider can be used to go back through and really take a look at each of those breaks in sequence. So whereas this um, would require maybe three or four different still illustrations, um, the user can really get a full idea of this ankle break sequence all at once and um, get to know it much better. Looks painful, right? <laughs> so another way an interactive animation can be used is to help describe the progression of a disease or condition. So this is an animated model I animated for an iBook talking about degenerative joint disorder. And this shows the progression of the development of bone spurs and cartilage degradation in the joint of a horse. So as you can see, this is a much more engaging way to show a traditional before and after illustration of the progression of a condition. And then animating the motion of the joint, you can really get an idea for how this repetitive motion would degrade away the cartilage and uh, damage the bone. So another way an interactive um, animation can be used is to explain biomechanics or complicated anatomy. So this is a lung model I created to show uh, the lungs breathing as well as how the muscles abduct the arytenoid cartilages to move the vocal cords. So the larynx is a really tricky 3D model to think about, and 
the viewer is really required to reconstruct like cross sections and different angles of illustrations to get a full idea of this as well as having to add on that motion. But with an animated interactive model, you can really get an understanding for how all this works almost instantly. So it's a really good use of that. So in conclusion, Sketchfab is a great way to add interactivity into an iBook um, and illustrate topics such as anatomy, complex injury, a progression of a condition or a disease, and biomechanics. And it's also web-based, so you can really show off your 3D models and animations without losing any quality uh, or increasing your file size. But now I'll pass it off to Emily, who will be talking about incorporating 3D models without needing an internet connection. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm Emily, and I'm going to be talking about Object to VR. So, an Object to VR is another way of creating uh, widgets um, for like an iBook or an, uh, an extension that you can embed into a web page. Um, but instead of using a full 3D model, it sort of simulates one um, by using 2D images. Um, so say you have a really, oh, there we go. Uh, say you have like a really complex 3D model. Um, and like this one I was using, that's, uh, you can't see all the layers here, but it has just a lot of components to it. So even if you keep everything low poly, it adds up over time. It makes a very large file size. Um, and that makes it really hard to put into iBooks or even into Sketchfab. And you don't always want to rely on having people having an internet connection. Uh, so taking this and you take it, uh, renders from it basically. Oop. Sorry. Uh, you take basically renders out of it and you can make uh, 2D images uh, instead of 3D. Why is it? Sorry. Um, so you can take those 2D images and you can basically simulate a 3D object by taking multiple camera angles, uh, sort of like a frame-by-frame -frame animation style, um, which is really useful uh, for keeping the file size really low, but then it's also something that you can use um, and embed directly into the iBook, and it's self-contained. It's not something you need an internet connection for. Um, and then the way it's set up in object to vr you have this thing called the light table. And the light table is basically a series of rows and columns set up with these images um, that are basically like animations that you can scroll through vertically and horizontally, um, which is really great so that you can have, say, like a 360 degree turnaround of an object, but then you can also have it um, in various um, like levels of zoom, or you can have it uh, turned at various angles, um, which is really nice so you can have the user scroll through these um, and they can turn it around and up and down or in and out, um, which is really nice. Um, you can also set up different states, so if you want to show this as well, and you want to have them scrolling in two different angles, but you also want to have different materials on it or in different positions, um, like I have the limb bent or straight in this, um, which is really useful. Um, you can do that as well. So it adds actually a lot of layers of complexity, even though you only have two-dimensional images, not a full 3D object that they're working off of. Um, then you can modify how the user interacts with this on top of just which images you put in. You can determine where they start in the animation timeline. Um, if you want to start with that very first image, if you want partway through, um, if you want it zoomed in or zoomed out to begin with, which is nice. Um, you can also wrap it so you can just scroll infinitely and keep circling around an object, which is really useful. Say if you have that 360 degree zoom or something, or rotation or something like that. And then you also have these things called hotspots, which function a little bit like in Sketchfab, where you have the points and the labels on things. You can set up uh, points they can click on or areas they can scroll across. Um, and they can include titles. You can include uh, links to other widgets or even URLs to websites, um, which can add a, a lot of more um, variability or more um, flexibility to these widgets. So if you want an animation, if you want them to be able to go to a web page, um, there's a lot you can do with that, which is really useful. Um, this one I have it set up so you can just see like the names of the joints as you scroll across. And you can have these label every individual image, or you can have it constant across rows and columns, which is really useful so you don't have to do it a hundred times. Um, like I said, this one also works on the HTML5, um, so it's something you can drag and drop directly into an iBook, which is really useful. 
um, though it does have a couple other output options uh, if you want to embed it in a web page, say, or some other medium. Uh, you can decide on how large they can view it, if they can zoom in and out, if you want it to start automatically scrolling through the animation when they get into it, uh, which can be very useful. Um, and then there has this thing called the skin, and that's sort of an overlay that you can put on top of all of these images you have put together, um, which works really well if you want something like um, a button or um, you want a border around it for some reason. In this case, I have a couple buttons so you can switch between the flexed and the standing limb. So you can view it and it'll actually toggle between the two different states I have set up in the direct, uh, exact same position within the timeline. So when you'll see it later, uh, you can actually, you know, if you wanted to see this angle with these objects at this position, and then you want to see that same thing, but now it's flexed. And that's really useful. Um, and as you can see, it does have a very specific file type that you have to use, um, but that's really not uh, hard to set up. And once you have that set up, it does drag directly into iBooks, which is really nice. So, and then here's an example of the widget, which you can actually preview in any internet browser um, before you get into an iBook or a web page or anything like that. So it's really nice uh, to be able to preview and kind of see what you've gotten yourself into. And so, so they create these HTML5 widgets, which are really useful. They're a small file size, and they're really flexible to use. And they're also self-contained, so you, they're uh, completely within the iBook or wherever you put it, so you don't have to rely on an internet connection or anything like that, which can be really useful when creating educational materials like this. And as we get into more interactive options here, um, I'll pass this off to Danielle. Okay. Thanks, Emily. Um, I'll be talking about I'll be talking about Tumult Hype, which is an HTML5 program that you can use for creating interactive content. Uh, one of the other tools that we use in the ERC is Tumult Hype, and it's an HTML5 and JavaScript-based interactive content creator. It's sort of a mashup between several Adobe programs as well as PowerPoint in that the inter interfaces are very similar, and as a medical illustrator, it's very easy to jump from those programs into Hype. Um, uh, one of the main draws for Hype is that you can export uh, iBook widgets directly out of it, so you can skip that post-process uh, session of trying to uh, get your plets together and everything you need for a widget. Um, and in addition, if you aren't using iBooks to create your educational content, you can create HTML5 files, uh, movies, PNG sequences, and GIFs. So the interface, as you can see, is... Um, Uh, similar to Adobe Animate in that there's a stage area where all of your objects will sit, as well as a timeline and properties manager where you control your animations. Scenes are kind of set up like PowerPoint slides in that you can add and separate animated segments that way. Your uh, inspector menu is on the right. It's collapsible. That's where all your object properties are. And the resources library as well where all of your imported assets will sit. So this file shows that you can animate elements on and off the stage, and hide things, you can add interactive buttons. Um, Hype comes with already programmed commands, but if you so choose and you're able to, uh, you can add JavaScript uh, commands into your iBook that you write yourself. Um, you have the ability to use multiple timelines to further uh, control your interactive content, as well as adding more scenes, which in this case, it's useful for uh, separating questions in a quiz and just keeping everything organized. Um, if you are able to, you can edit the elements in your HTML. That will influence the widget directly via that interface. Or you can click on any element in the stage and go to edit elements in your HTML, and it brings up this window. So can influence it that way as well. And when you're finally ready to test your interactive content, you can bring it into, in a, into any web browser that you have installed on your computer and test the interactivity and make sure it's working. So at the ERC, we use it for a couple of different things. One is interactive images. So this is a kidney nephron that I made for an iBook. Um, you can turn on and off bits of anatomy and add labels. So I'll take it into iBooks here. You can preview the content as well. Um, see, you can turn on different things. And it's useful for students who are first learning anatomy and need to separate the segments and learn it in pieces. 
Uh, you can also add uh, hidden buttons, like in this iBook example, and go ghost in anatomy, um, which is useful for learning the layers of things and for diagnostic imaging, like knowing where to place the ultrasound device. Slider widgets work kind of like timelines, except they're, uh, they allow more control for what's on the screen. Um, you can create a sort of pseudo 3D uh, model with this, which is what this um, particular example is of. Or you can use it for uh, giving the user more control over a biological animation. So once you click off of that slider, it'll stick on that particular slide so they can learn it in pieces. Another thing is um, quiz interactivity. I already mentioned uh, quiz earlier, but um, one really great thing about Hype is that you can add feedback based on a student's response or your user's response, um, which is not a feature that's currently available in uh, the, the iBooks quiz widget. And that can hopefully enhance the student's deep learning. So all in all, Hype is a pretty useful tool for creating interactive educational content quickly and easily. Its sleek interface and similarities to other programs we use all the time make it pretty easy to pick up. Um, and for someone with almost no coding knowledge going into it, I found that I was able to make what I needed to in Hype and export it to iBooks and, you know, it works fairly easily. Um, but if you do have need for coding, they have very active forums where you can access um, different conversations in the past and some people share snippets of code or even entire files that you can kind of reverse engineer from. And if you do know someone who knows coding or you know it yourself, uh, they do have the HTML5 and JavaScript interfaces that will give you access to that and allow you to influence the widget directly. All right, so that concludes our talk. Um, iBooks Author is a great jumping off point for creating educational content um, for science communication. And while on its own, it's a very sleek piece of software with built-in features for interactivity, there are different programs that you can put into your iBook and elevate your educational content. Thank you.